Welcome to another episode of You the Mom podcast. I'm Janice, founder of Mommy Mundo, and today we're going to have a really interesting conversation with one of the experts on the topic. It's one of the topics that are quite popular in Mommy Mundo ever since, and it's all about having a natural birth. Okay, and I'm so happy that our guest today said yes to guesting with us um, because she really is one of the thought leaders and practitioners in the country on this topic. So I'd like to call on our guest today said yes to this invitation because she is one of the thought leaders and practitioners on this in the country. So I'd like to welcome my friend, Irina Otmakova. Hello, Irina. Hi, Janice. <laughs> nice to see you again. Yes, it's so good to see you yes. and reconnect after that whole uh, one year and a half. Well, we're still in it right now, but I'm happy that I saw you before I left. Right, right. And then time so, flies and so many things happen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, like but I've always wanted to get right now. Yes, def- yes, it's been mm-hmm. strange, right? To mm-hmm. say the least. Yes. <laughs> but it's I, I love um, to have this opportunity to reconnect with you and find out how you're doing and also how the moms are doing with their natural birthing. I'm sure it's mm-hmm. changed somewhat um, like yeah. everything else. Yeah. Um, plus, you know how when every time we have you in our events and in Mommy Mundo, uh, moms have a lot of questions about right. um, having a natural birth or having yeah. a water birth mm-hmm. even. So thank you for oh, being I with mean, us. And, yes, thank you yeah. for your invitation. Happy yeah, to so, chat with you. Yes. Thank All you, Irina. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'd like to say a bit more about yourself. No? So Irene is a mother of three. She mm-hmm. lives in Quezon City in Manila and has been professionally involved in the field of women's health and rights for nearly a decade be- before becoming a mom yourself. So coming out of your first home birth experience, Irina pursued the childbirth doula certification in order to be able to assist other mothers and families to plan plan out um, their own birth preferences Mm -hmm. and help them achieve a joyful, balanced, and pleasurable birth. So um, I first want to ask you about your journey. You know, we've known each other for so long. I've never had the opportunity to ask you about um, how you started. So you were a an activist of sorts before you became a mom and were you always in manila like when how long have you been based i arrived to manila in 2008 uh with my job in an ngo and that was around women's rights and health uh, uh so um i had quite some exposure to um yeah to a lot of issues that women struggle with and uh, the events around childbirth is just it's just one of them if not the central health yeah. issues in, in the women's lives right um so and one case that we were working on was dealing exactly with that like home birth how legal is that how safe uh, is is that a woman's right to decide eventually uh and that had to do actually with the uh, with a case with a midwife in all way in Hungary, so like it's oh. it's a, it's it's very much a global issue of uh, where and how the woman gives birth, and how far she can decide about that, and how far she is supported by the institutions, the policies, the practices in place. So yeah. uh, uh, yes, in my work in that NGO, I dealt with with that like more with the legal more with the international campaigning uh stuff uh side of the issue and so Irina let me interrupt for a while so so the concern was prenatal health I know that there's a lot of um issues with prenatal health in the Philippines because of economic issues so was that it and then they would have to give birth with a Manghihilot, not normally manghihilot, or is that the way, it how, very, how is it? very complex context, right? So on one yeah. hand, we have uh, the lack of accessibility for quality prenatal, prenatal care, um, yeah. where, yeah, certain issues just do not get screened, and then complications will arise during the childbirth process. 
and that reflects in the bigger numbers of maternal mortality and morbidity. And on the yeah. other hand, we have uh, very advanced private hospitals uh, that okay. offer the, the, and cater you know, the whole range of care for, yeah. uh, for a good price, right? So, yes, but- yes. Uh, And it's they, inaccessible to a lot of- But it's not know. accessible for the majority, yeah. but while it's accessible for um, yeah for, for the class of people who can afford uh, private uh, private hospital care, um, you also have to deal with a range of issues like in how far can I choose how I want to give birth in the hospital setting? Can I have yeah. the birth that I want? Can I have the support that I want? Um, right. So yeah, like those are all the issues, and it makes it very complicated and very interesting and fascinating so it's it's a it's a huge yeah. thing to really work in but it is also very personal because each and every birthing journey is one of a kind it's unique it's the only opportunity to give birth to this very baby it's the only opportunity to live yeah. through this very pregnancy uh, and when I got pregnant for the first time, so everything political became very personal. <laughs> okay, so right. what's going to be for me? How do I want to do that? And I had big dreams, so I somehow I got inspired by, uh, you know, like completely going wild, giving birth on the beach, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like being supported like by dolphins, like. <laughs> out of the world and then saying but actually this kind of you know thinking out of the box and like pursuing something like completely otherworldly actually led me to yeah. you know to the reality uh to to the information um that empowered me in my choice for a home birth with a human midwife yeah. you know in the <laughs> in the yeah in the safety in the surrounding of of yeah of my my own home with uh, my husband with my family yeah. so how many uh, years ago was this i you know how old is your eldest child she's eight now so eight and a half years ago eight. so like nine years yeah. ago let's say well, since the start of the pregnancy so <laughs> those are the choices that i was facing and yeah. i quickly understood that the local setup um uh is tricky to navigate right yeah. so so uh, a lot of home yeah. births were not legal at the time is that right it's, like it's, or births outside the hospital what was the law back then uh it wasn't illegal it wasn't illegal uh what was difficult is to find someone who will attend oh, that's right. home birth. and i was very yes. fortunate to find an american missionary midwife deborah who uh yes, Deborah. in in a women's event i was just seated next to her and it's like hey i'm looking oh. for me she's like hey i'm a midwife it's like what wow <laughs> like, yeah like for my pregnancy i very much felt like i was led that way and yeah. everything was just falling into pieces and then like in the one place so I found my midwife and she was like, yes, yeah, sure, we can, you know. Let's say hello to Deborah. Hi, hello, Deborah. Deborah. We love I you. saw her also yeah. before uh -huh. I left in an event. So yes, it perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was Deborah. Deborah was your midwife. Deborah is my midwife with all eight years ago. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, and so you found your midwife and then yeah, you planned your birth with her. And I planned the birth with her and it all worked out as envisioned and uh, definitely very happy and lucky that it did this way and i was a changed person i was a changed woman ever since and uh just there giving birth i already knew that this will be my life's mission <laughs> because wow. it felt so good to be supported just to be there surrounded by three midwives because deborah came also with an assistant midwife and an apprentice midwife so they was nice. just an amazing women's circle plus obviously my husband and my mom flew all the way from russia just to be there wow yeah, so it was a it was a very family-centered event uh it wasn't medical in any way uh and fortunately it was a very healthy pregnancy and a very straightforward yeah. birth 
So uh, it it just no dolphins, no no dolphins. No no, no <laughs> I had a lot of paintings of dolphins because dolphins somehow ah. did inspire me. Yes, I painted dolphins all through the pregnancy, and actually I went to the beaches in in Mindanao in Osamis yeah. to swim, with, swim the with the dolphins. I've yeah. been there. I've been to Osamis. I've right been there and swam with the dolphins yeah, yeah so so they you know exactly where i went so this is this is how yeah. kind of where my journey begins and why dolphins because oh. it's actually a reality it happened it happened there were women in russia in black sea who back in the 70s 80s also kind of escaping the horrors of the like centralized impersonal maternity care of the soviet union hospitals they wanted <laughs> they wanted to give on to give birth on their own in nature so they had these camps uh by the black sea and some women reported that they were you know giving birth in the water and the sea and the dolphins will come just wow. right here and they would kind of have that connection and you know uh they felt the support coming from those intelligent creatures and the anxiety yeah. and pain were taken away so somebody uh, emphasize wow. mentioned that, that the anxiety and pain was taken away by the dolphins and i was not yet pregnant but it just kind of dropped in my head <laughs> like you know yeah. i have your points like this is for me i want the dolphins to take the anxiety <laughs> and pain away <laughs> from my birth and uh, yeah. it, it's more something that triggered my curiosity rather than a practical manifestation. Yeah. It can be done. People did that. Yeah, that's right. Mind. Right. So it, it was just more of a spark and something wow. that led me, you know, to the books, to the information, yeah. to explore yeah. options, to find my midwife eventually and to really yeah. change a career. At, at, at the end right yeah. so so how um, soon after yeah. you gave birth because Irina just to share with you yeah. when I had my when I was pregnant with my son uh, Kobe that was yeah. 25 years ago right yeah. thing. I was looking for a at, at in my time it was breastfeeding right looking for a breastfeeding so far there was none I went to one and I didn't like it I didn't want like the way it's handled and I uh -huh eventually made my own breastfeeding support group and yeah. um yeah. classes uh -huh. And then after that, it just came from there. It eventually did Mommy Mundo. Right. So it's the same, right. you know, it's yeah. really interesting how how we moms, a lot of mompreneurs start off that way, like mm -hmm. with their own needs and eventually mm -hmm. trying to help other moms. Too. Yeah. So yeah. how soon? Because me, it took two years before, uh -huh. after I gave birth, then I got busy with the baby, eventually set up okay. the, the parenting advocacy. But for you, after you gave birth, how soon did you ah oh, did you get like, you got trained right away? Yes. Wow. Uh, maybe a week late or something, you know, just <laughs> coming out of the like the very newborn, you know, please like just yes. settling the practical matter. But pretty much right away, I enrolled with Childbirth International and yes. uh, and completed the doula certification like in the matter of uh, less than six months, I think. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it was very driven. And uh, I had yeah. to uh, observe at least two births and report on them and reflect. But I decided, no, two is just too little. Why won't I go live by the birthing center where my midwife uh, is coming from and <laughs> just, 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 you know, stalk every birth <laughs> that is happening wow. there for like two weeks. And there was a lot of birth to see, yes. <laughs> and your husband was supportive. Like, oh, very much so. Yeah. In your yeah. advocacy too. Yeah. That's great. Because yeah. we need that, right? Mm -hmm. So amazing. So Irina with a six month old baby eventually how soon did you move to your, the near deborah <laughs> uh, it was around christmas yeah that was uh, she was all moved. within a year uh, within a year yeah but it, i didn't move their houses i just lived there like around christmas break uh like for uh -huh. two three weeks just to see yeah. a lot of those. yeah so like it's an immersion like an immersion right like the, real immersion yeah I'm wow familiar. yeah okay so from there, mm -hmm. um, what happened? Like, did the, did you eventually have your own? Do you call it patients or what do you call uh, the moms who go on? Clients, doula mamas. Clients. Yeah. Yeah, doula mamas. Mm -hmm. And eventually, was it was it something that was, like, did you feel, feel a need? Like, um, did the moms who needed it 
um, go to you? Or did you feel like there, a lot of education was needed? And how did it eventually There was um, clearly spread? a gap, a gap, uh, yeah. you know, in what the local scene had to offer back then. Yeah. And uh, it was me and Dula Beatty who came pretty much at the same time. Uh, to just start serving mom and create the, the local yeah. notion of doula, of what doula is and what doula can do. Uh, and yeah. Things. And the requests started coming pretty quick. Yes. Uh, support was needed. There was uh, by then in St. Luke's Global already a birthing suite, uh, but it was barely used. Ah. Nobody really prepared for a water birth, or the, the, the doctors were barely practicing it. Okay, so Irina, let's, for the sake of our listeners, can you tell uh -huh. us what the doula is? And then okay. um, how does a mom choose the location All of right. her birth? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If she wanted natural. Fine. Okay, so doula is a professional birth companion. Uh, sometimes the words that are being applied to doula is a coach, uh, like a birth coach. Um, but I firmly believe that no mother really needs to be coached how to give birth because it's something <laughs> that is in the inner knowledge anyways. So doula is... Uh, Usually a woman who is knowledgeable about birth, who is uh, trained to provide informational, psychological support during pregnancy and, you know, labor itself and also physical support. So sometimes it comes down just to a lot of back massage and, you know, like counter pressures to help the mom cope with those intense sensations uh, that come with labor, right? Uh, and just be that one-on-one -on -one companion that is focused on the needs of the mother in labor. While um, in the setting of the hospitals, usually uh, nobody else can provide a continuous one-on-one -on -one care. So like really meeting the mother's needs, emotional needs, psychological needs, physical needs. So just yeah. really be there for, your, for her. And that relationship, um, the work with the pregnant moms or the work with the doula from the pregnant mom, like coming into my direction, it usually starts during pregnancy. We have to be acquainted, like I have to understand um, where she's coming from, like what, what's her personality, what's her preferences, and really align what I can offer with what she needs. Uh, yes. And then, then, then it's the labor day, the birth of the baby. So the you, the doula usually joins when the mother really needs help, whether it's very early on or somewhere midway. Um, yes. As a rule, when uh, active labor is kind of already established, all the way through to the birth of the baby and a few hours after. Yeah, and doula okay. can also help with postpartum recovery, with some breastfeeding yeah, advice. Wow. Yeah, so it's that. Yeah. It's one-on-one -on -one support, one-on-one -on -one care. So if you had a traditional birth, you can also actually offer your service as a doula. Is traditional, right? in a sense, medicated yeah. hospital birth. Like, that's yeah. traditional. Traditional can also be, you know... Oh, that's right, that's right. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Thank yes. you for the clarification. Right, so like, let's say a mainstream hospital birth. Yeah, yes, yes absolutely. Hospital, yeah. can be and yeah. can make a world of a difference in the experience. And logistically, they have to um, yeah. register you as a companion. Is it needed um, in the Philippines? It depends on the facility. Yeah. Some facilities ah, okay. like, okay, this is, this is what our policy, like one or two companions, so who is your companion? So it can be... A uh, husband, obviously, and then a family member or a doula. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Usually, it implies that the mother would uh, uh, contact, contract the services of a of a midwife, professional midwife, to support in the home birth to receive the medical care. And uh, if she chooses to also a doula for for that psychological, emotional, physical support through uh, okay. through the birth. Yes. Okay, so Irina, so there's still a midwife. If she wants a home birth, she'll get the midwife and then she'll still, and it's optional to get your services. But I know that it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I know moms who have been under your care. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us like any stories or how it usually goes? Like 
maybe tell us in the context of uh, an actual story of a mom who chose to have a water birth. Yeah, How so do you many. plan with her? Like, I know there's like, I, I've seen some forums about it. Like, they, you talk about what pool mm-hmm. to get and then mm-hmm. all the materials that you need to prepare. Mm-hmm. Like, how does it go from when a mom calls you and says, I really mm-hmm. want a water birth, can you help me? And then uh, what do you need to plan out? And eventually, how does it usually go? Usually, we have several meetings. And that's an opportunity to really ask questions. So some moms come very prepared and researched and read all the right books. And there's just, yeah. okay, there's not much to, you know, to inform or to, to talk about. And then there are moms who really just stepped out of the comfort zone and like intuitively searching and really eager to learn more. So there, like th- th- those are the meetings to really sort out where, where can we yeah. fill the gaps? Where can uh, where can we help? Uh, uh, either okay. information or the logistical support. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So first question. Mm-hmm. So let's pretend I'm a mom who's super okay. clueless, but have heard about it. Uh huh. So Irina, um, what is the benefit of having a, a, a water birth? Let's talk about water birthing. All right. Okay. Usually, that's where. I, I get asked that a lot, like in terms uh-huh. of our online and people, when we ask about what topics moms want to hear. Hmm. So yeah. what is the benefit of having a water birth? And, you know, moms having a water birth is like setting up a a birthing area in your own home. And usually it's an inflatable pool or they're actually birthing pools, right? So, yeah. Yeah. but first of all, what would, um, why would, why would it be an option for moms? What would make a mom and dad Think about me. What if we just do it at home? Okay. Okay. Um, good questions. I would really like to know where you got inspired. Like, did you watch yeah. movies? Is it uh, somebody in your family who gave birth? So this is my counter questions. Yeah. To really see where the mother is coming from. Like, where the motivation. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, oh, but they say that it's less painful. Is it so? Is it less painful? Right? <laughs> Uh, yes and no. So maybe it will be for you less painful. And yes, like yeah. see water birth, like immersion in the body of hot water as an amazing tool for uh, coping with the intense sensations that are with, that come with labor. It's just no two ways about it. They will come. It's going to be intense. And you will need to have yeah. support. You will need to have support from the people around, and having the liberty and the freedom to immerse yourself in the pool. It's going to be a, a big difference for you at any point of labor, uh, whether it is at some point, yeah. you know, whether you are seven, eight cm dilation if you're being checked, and this is when you decide to be in the pool, and it's going to make a big difference. And maybe then you will decide to step out, and maybe you will be more comfortable to give birth at the bed. We don't know. Or maybe you would like to, to go back in the pool and actually push, release the baby down, you know, in the water. Okay. It's wherever your birthing journey is going to take you. So if you, you know, uh, if the first motivation is giving birth in the water, I would say don't get too attached to the image of giving the giving yeah. birth to the baby in the water because we don't know where your sensations, your surges, like your comfort is going to take you through labor. We will support you uh all through the journey and if eventually you'll be more comfortable sitting on the toilet bowl and 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 your baby will crown there that's how it's meant to be and it's fine Ah. Uh, oh i love that so that's what you were saying earlier that moms don't really need a coach to give birth because you have your own natural Mm. instincts Mm. of course Mm. to give birth um i always thought that when you set up the pool like Mm. you're giving birth in the pool so no so during the birthing process with you and the mm-hmm. midwife, you just follow the mom's cue. Mm-hmm. I remember in mm-hmm. labor when you're having labor contractions, and mm-hmm. you're really like in your own world, like you're just you're following. In your own world. If you're having you're a positioning of your body, birth exactly that is uninterrupted yeah. by the influence of drugs and painkillers. Uh, yeah. It's the hormones will take you to a zone of no mind. 
where you're very much in your own world and where you're in tune with your body and you will know exactly where you need to be. And if you feel called to go in the water and just stay there till the till the moment the baby is born and right after, that's amazing. That's wonderful. It's absolutely like your freedom, your choice to decide to do that. And we will support you in that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So another interesting thing that I want to ask you about is, because um, I know some of the reasons, mm-hmm. but what are the benefits of actually giving birth in the water? Like, why would a mom be attached to that idea? I know mm-hmm. that um, the principle of a baby mm-hmm. being in your womb in mm-hmm. water mm-hmm. and flowing into another um, water environment is supposed to be more natural than a baby it, coming it, into it, like air. I would say it adds to the smoothness of the process. First of all, yeah, hot water is relaxing and it does take the edge of the sensations. Yeah. Like it smoothens out those yeah. intense contractions. So it's something that very comfortable for the mother. The buoyancy of the water helps her really like get into the most interesting positions you know whether it is a squat in the in the water tap or all fours or you know like with the like a runner pose with the legs twist so whatever is conducive for like for the for the release for the pushing so like that freedom of choosing the position because in the in the mainstream sitting uh, setting it's just laying down on the back and legs on the stirrups the water adds to the freedom of choosing your position of birth. Uh, again, hot water helps to relax the tissues of the perineum. So this is yeah. where lots of cases of tearing get prevented because of that yeah. smoothness and stretching out and like gradual descent and pushing and this this, this counter effect of the hot water is, is very helpful indeed. And uh, for the baby, indeed, babies coming out from the water environment uh, into the water environment. So it's a sort of transition that is not yet a transition for the baby. So the baby is out, but the baby is not yet out of the water environment. So the baby will not breathe in the water. Like there will be no instinct of like breathing yeah. in the water. It's only when the baby is exposed to the oxygen, like really to the air. That's when the whole system switches just in the wow. matter. Wow. Yes. Uh, and the baby, while the baby is being born, baby keeps receiving uh, oxygen through the umbilical cord that it connects, um, still inside in the womb, connects the baby to the mother's consent and the mother's body. So it's an absolutely safe practice, of course, given there are no, like, no red flags, no contraindications. Yeah. Again, for low risk, healthy pregnancies, healthy labors, it's it's a very yeah. good safe practice. Yeah, yeah. all the so, evidence is in favor of that. Yeah, so that's that's good. That's really interesting to me. Like it's new, everything's new, and um, I'm sure a lot of moms are like, "What? <laughs> they haven't even heard about it yet." But yeah. yes, moms, there is a notion of having a water birth, and it's quite interesting too. Yeah. Um, for the sake of time, of course, we can't go into detail. So check out Irina's page. Your Instagram is... Uh, it, um, now it's at, Birthing Gently. Yeah, at Birthing Gently. And you share so much information and photos and videos there. So mm-hmm. do check that out for more yeah. information. But yeah. here, um, it's really interesting that uh, I didn't know that um, or I did know it, but I didn't realize that there would be that soothing element to water mm. and it can actually um, decrease the chances of tearing. Mm. So, because, well, yeah. everything, right? There's less friction and I guess the mom's right. also more relaxed. So right. her body's all also not contracted that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And that the baby, mm-hmm. um, the, the instinct to breathe only starts when, the baby comes to, he or she comes to air. Wow. Yeah. It's so it's such really such a miracle, right? Mm. So okay, so all that, um, all of these um informations, what if the mom gives birth in the water or in the bowl or out whatever position you're there to assist her. Mm. Um I know you also there's this concept of, of hypnobirthing. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what that means. I do read a lot about it, and maybe okay. some of our listeners. Want yeah. to ask about that? What is hypnobirthing, and is it something that you practice too? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it's it's an approach for preparations for the big day uh, using 
some hypno self hypnosis tools. So it's not that yeah. you're gonna be like you know in the, the shows like <laughs> the hypnosis has been done, you know, to be made to do crazy things. No, it's something. It's a tool that you consciously study du- during pregnancy and consciously apply during the birthing time. Uh, in a nutshell, um, hi- with hypnobirthing approach, you learn about the birthing process as it's meant to be by nature. Basically, with that information, with understanding the work of hormones, that with understanding what physiological birth is in a supported environment, uh, you will override the preconceived ideas. And I think most of us, like from growing up, uh, being, you know, little girls, like perceiving the stories from the family. Of how, you know, and movies. Movies and also. Movies <laughs> how it is a sheer disaster, you know, to give birth. Like all these screaming faces and, the, you know, the water broke and they're like, please save me. So, like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of drama, right, of how the birth is okay. usually portrayed in the mainstream media and uh, in the reality too. Right, uh, yeah. there's, there's already generations and generations of trauma connected to how birth is experienced by the majority of women. Like, I was not allowed to move, they just gave me that, it's just uh, they yeah. told me this, and then the C section, like this kind of the this kind okay. of story, of, like kind of not understanding what happened to my body, why didn't my body give birth yeah. normally and like why did they do all these things like the, w- there is a point where uh, in the history of childbirth where women started losing the agency of you know yeah. of, uh, being in charge of the of their own uh, birth experience birth so experience, yeah. like yeah like all these factors they um, they all come together and form a lot of preconceived ideas of what birth is and you know if you're expecting and if you're if you're just starting to figure out what is in there for you hypnobirthing approach really helps to remove these layers of preconceived okay. ideas um and particularly it helps you to do that first information just really factual information uh but also relaxation techniques Certain relaxation yes. techniques that you can practice using certain tracks that will have your body completely relaxed. And with the relaxation of the body comes the relaxation of the mind, uh, where the yes. critical faculties that hold on to those uh, old beliefs will also relax and will allow yes. the new positive messages to overwrite the, those um yeah, the, the fearful yeah, the fears, fears. And worries. Yeah. 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 So this is this is like part of what hypnobirthing is, plus um practice of certain breathing. And usually yeah. it all comes down to long conscious breaths uh during the surges and in between and yeah. during the pushing time. Uh so instead of like strenuous push, push, push and or being coached how to push. Um, it's also about breathing the baby down and out uh, you, using certain yeah. techniques. So in my experience, it is very, very helpful to practice, yeah. to appropriate those techniques, to have them in your arsenal, um, definitely apply, and then definitely. see if it all works for you or you need to just unleash your inner animal and, you know, yeah. like... <laughs> Give it your own thing and do your own thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So there's no rules, right? It's just really mm-hmm. arming yourself with information and tools. Right. And then on the day, just let nature take its course. Mm-hmm. But at least you have that sense. Yeah. And I think yeah. it really is important that you brought up the all these preconceived um, beliefs and <clears throat> traumas, generational traumas, and mm-hmm. whatever um, we're carrying with us in terms of how we want our births to be, our yeah. um, ideas on birthing in general yeah. will really shape how our experience is. Yeah. So, yeah. And having the tools of hypnobirthing or breathing even mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. really does make you more confident. Like mm-hmm. Anything, being educated and informed prior mm-hmm. to the experience will 
<clears throat> will give you the tools to manage all the fears and oh, yes. um yeah. coming out of it more empowered yeah um takes away a lot of other possible traumatic experiences so True. it's important yeah. to to really learn all these and mm. um which mm-hmm. is why we're talking to you today and also mm-hmm. um trying to do all the classes mm-hmm. that we do in mommy mundo and in other groups as well yeah. so i love that i mean i also um for pregnant moms out um who are here mm-hmm. um learning the breathing techniques and the mm-hmm. consciousness of pushing down is actually Um, mm-hmm. Something I also picked up when I was pregnant. My mother-in-law is an OB. Uh-huh. Man, so she uh-huh. was telling me that a lot of moms, when they push, they think they're pushing, but mm-hmm. they're actually just um, yeah. in, up to it's, the throat. Like they say, right. mm, they'll push only up to here. They're not really pushing, bearing yeah. down. Yeah. So I, I guess those tools that you teach them mm-hmm. prior to birth will really give them the consciousness of, mm-hmm. of that bearing down skill at the very mm-hmm. least, right? I just want to mention uh, that before pandemic, uh, my work usually focused on like my doula clients only. Uh, but since the pandemic started, started like I also saw the need to bring this knowledge to as many people possible. So this is why I host every two months uh, Instagram-based birthing class. So it's entirely Instagram based uh, and on a private uh, account where all of these techniques are shared and and more. Uh, so it takes five weeks. Uh, so the information is shared gradually, and it's always you know like you don't have to go anywhere. You don't need to like schedule or like yeah. take the whole day out for a Zoom, you know, for for a whole day Zoom class. So it's very like gradual, and it's uh, shared in portions, uh, and it's accessible uh, for the mothers even when they're already in the labor and delivery room. Just you know, as a, as a, as a reference, like yes. all these techniques and uh, certain exercises are all there. So yeah, uh, definitely. Thanks for sharing that. So you can message us at Mommy Mundo or message. Irene on her Instagram page or just check her Instagram page yeah. for that. That's really interesting. And that is really one of the gifts of the the gifts of the pandemic. You know, it's <laughs> right. like being able to do all these classes without leaving your home. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. okay, so wow, I learned a lot already. Um I want to know, like I know you have a treasure trove of stories from all oh the God. moms that have been under your care. What is your most memorable or experience that you've had? With any mom, it's just so or, many, like yeah. big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I know my friend Nico. Mm-hmm. Was Nico Maka with you? Was Nico Maka under your care? Yeah. Yeah. With her first birth, it was a wonderful hospital. Yeah, because she's a friend of mine. We actually mm-hmm. featured her story on Mommy Mundo because Nico is uh, a singer. Okay. So uh-huh. I know that it was a music-filled birth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah, and it was so a no yeah. hypno birth, and I always yeah remember her story as the mama who stepped into the pool, and no force in the world will make her girl go out of the pool. So like seven hours later, she stepped out of the pool with her baby. So as in wow. like it was for her like water birthing, laboring in the water, like staying in the water all throughout the. Uh, labor transition, like active labor transition, pushing. It was her thing. It was uh, in most of the births. It's kind of in and out, in and out. Especially if it takes some time. And first births usually yeah. do take time. With Nico, it was just the pool. Yeah. <laughs> like she wanted. <laughs> like to amazing. Yeah. Maybe we can have Nico sometime to tell the story. Yeah, but I know that. that. And I, there was music and all. I think um, I just realized that you know having the control over how you want your birth experience mm-hmm. to be is probably what um, natural or home birthing is all about, yeah. right? One um, story comes to mind that's yeah. one something yes. uh, unusual and something you know yeah. that um, that we can learn from. Um, that was also a home birth because the home births really give give a picture of birth that you sometimes can't see that in the hospitals really it's just no way you can see that so in, in that home birth uh it was a good intense almost one day labor uh like we were i think by hour 20 
of uh, you know intensity of contraction and full dilation wow. in a baby quite low. Um, so according to the textbook uh, and like how the mainstream practice goes, okay, full dilation, baby quite low. We need to have the baby within two hours. So pushing two hours, the baby will be out. But the mother didn't have an urge to push. None. Oh. Right? Yeah. So that means her body is not yet pushing. Yes. It's not right. yet releasing the baby. Mm -hmm. uh, so we encourage her. We even try to coach her to push. You know, she was in the pool trying different positions. It was just not there. It was not coming. Um, wow. But the rest of the labor was fine. The baby is low, like it can be felt. Later station plus two in the you know in the medical terms. Yeah. Um, so what's the issue? Contractions kind of slowed down. She mom was tired. It's already midnight. I just want to sleep. Okay. Yeah. And you just want to sleep. Then it means it's yeah. not yet time. So. Uh, and the midwife would monitor the heartbeat of the baby all, all like intermittently all the time. So it was it was just fine. I had the mom rest uh, for several hours until we hear, oh, something is coming out. <laughs> and then when there's only one something that can be coming out, that's the baby. And the baby was just released uh, wow. in a matter of you know, a couple of pushes. So sometimes that's what, how birth is. Wow. So that story um, mm -hmm. just shows how birthing is really, it happens naturally and you it, don't have to control it. <laughs> it happens. However, um, this is what yeah. I also teach in the course. You need to be aware of the medical protocols that in the hospital setting, yeah. you will not be allowed to wait those hours for the baby that's to right. stand and just, you know, to be expelled naturally because the protocols are not set this way uh, yes. so you, as, as a, somebody who prepare for the birth you need to be aware and ask your care provider so what are we going to do in this like if that's my case how you know how flexible are you as, as a doctor in you know honoring those those the, the protocols will you support me in you know and mother-led pushing uh, so like really understanding these kind of nuances and being able to talk through unusual scenarios beforehand will make yeah. a big difference in the actual experience. Okay, so Irina, um, yeah. we're about to close our session today, but uh, I wanted to ask you first about other practices that come with um, having a birth, natural birth or a home birth. I know that there are protocols that are different in terms of or that may be different in terms of umbilical cord cutting, mm -hmm. um, placenta, placenta mm -hmm. handling. Like, how does it go with you, um, mm -hmm. if assisted by you? Um, mm -hmm. And what is the principle be behind delayed um, cutting of the umbilical cord? Because this is quite new. In my time, it was automatic. Like, when the birth automatic. baby goes to your breast, and you just cut yeah. it. But okay. can you teach us about that, that principle? According to the best available evidence, the moment the baby is born, about 20 to 30% of baby's blood supply is still in the placenta. So, yeah. and baby needs this, you know, the entire blood supply to maintain the iron level and just, you know, have a healthier start. Uh, so I, uh, this is why in most, like in most um, general protocol, it's already delayed for clumping. So it's not immediate clumping uh, according to the essential newborn care. It's at least two, three minutes until the cord stops pulsating. pulsating uh, yes. Yeah, that's, so uh, that's the very minimum, really. Uh, <clears throat> in practice, and like having held a lot of umbilical cords in my hands, I can tell that two, three minutes is not really cutting it. Oh. The cord keeps pulsating sometimes uh, for 30 minutes in different parts. Wow. It's just thinning out and uh, uh, and sometimes placenta is already delivered, but the cord keeps pulsating. So it's still a life force for the baby. The baby is still okay. receiving the T cells, the stem cells, um, but the majority of it in the really in the first couple of minutes. But yeah. it's a big difference. Uh, if you if you look at the cord at birth, uh, then slightly different at like three five minutes, and a completely different picture if you look at the cord like at the cord thirty minutes later. 
So what we um, advocate as like gentle birth keepers, uh, wait for bite. Do not rush mm. cutting the cord. Wait for bite until the, the okay. cord really turns the cord turns white. White, yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so and then how can, long does that yeah. take? Like what's the longest time you've ever um waited? Oh, well, it, it, it's it's usually 15, 30 minutes. The cord is the cord is mm. white, and that's when the uh, most of the placentas are already also out by then, within 10, 15 minutes after birth on average. Some some take longer, 20, 30 yeah. minutes, some up to an hour. Uh, so it's a principle uh, if you look like beyond the physiological uh, side of the story, but more into spiritual practice, you also preserve and honor the trinity of like the baby, the cord, the placenta until placenta. everything is born, the baby and yeah. the placenta. And then you uh, just celebrate it and say a little prayer mm -hmm. for the life force, for the nutrients, for, uh, for the love of the mother, for this blessing that is life. And, you know, and then ceremonially cut or even burn the cord. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you have the ceremony of the cord and the placenta. So mm -hmm. can you share that with us? Um, I know moms who have practiced um, that with you. What are the options with regards to handling? For, um, for the placenta? The cord? I know that the cord, you make it into um, dream catchers and all that. Yes, like, yeah. the keepsake, yes. Yeah. Or the placenta. Like, Can you tell us more about how that's handled just for the sake of information that this All is right, okay. well. so after after the baby is born and the placenta is born so that's when we usually separate the baby from the placenta and the cord um, some others choose a full lotus birth meaning no yeah. separation at all but that would be the minority because it's quite yeah. a logistical effort to keep the baby and the placenta oh. uh, together for several days until it naturally falls off, yeah. but you know. So the those, lotus birth the, is um, the lotus. you don't cut it until oh, it naturally falls. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know a few mothers who yeah. did. Like it was I know, never I know my personal do. choice. You know, like I am okay with the with the doing it when the placenta is born. I'm I'm fine with that. Um, me okay. personally, so it's a mother's but, choice. Yeah, yeah, it's a mother's okay. choice. So the mother would tell you that I want a lotus birth, and then you just. Um, exactly. manage with her yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah and um, then placenta can uh, usually it's about placenta that it can also yeah. serve as a as a um, energy booster yeah. for the mother like looking at the mammal world it's you know there is a reason that why all mammals consume the afterbirth and this placenta right after the delivery of the baby it's like all oh, it's 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 a rule in the mammalian world so maybe it was the case with the humans somewhere ah. back in the history um yes. but it, so it, mom some moms opt to um ingest their placenta in a capsule form i know yes. that's also some moms done. Yeah. choose to do it especially in the in a home birth environment like direct energy boost by drinking a smoothie with where I would blend oh. a piece of, just a nugget, small piece of placenta mixed with like strawberries, yeah. just with the color and for the taste. And oh. you don't even even taste anything. Um, it gives it, it gives a, a boost, a boost of energy. Uh, since placenta is filled with oxytocin in the natural form. Yeah, I can imagine. The, uterus contract uh, and prevent uh, onset of heavy bleeding postpartum. So a number of advantages really. Uh, and then afterwards, the whole placenta can be uh, dehydrated uh, and yeah. converted into supplements that the mother can take gradually uh, in her postpartum weeks and months. And the oh. main benefit, the main reported benefit is that it balances the hormones that are kind of uh, fluctuating in the postpartum period. Uh, and some moms go develop those baby blues or postpartum depression. Yeah, so cool. this is one of the main reasons is to help balance those hormones and, and prevent yeah. the onset of like heavy moods wow. and like, heavy thoughts. Mm. 
um, it, it's very hormonal. Uh, yeah. Uh, when it comes to post. So, in terms of the process with um, encapsulating a placenta, you also help mm-hmm. with that. Oh yeah. You're yeah. Also able to help yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so that's a whole other topic, but that's, that's usually one of the um, questions that come with having the water birth experience. So, thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that with us. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, we have to cut off our our session to be so, super informative and educational even for me. I mean, oh, thank you. you. Yeah. But can we end with um, advice that you can give a mom who's trying to decide what kind of birth she wants? Mm. Um, and also, especially now with the pandemic, like mm. what kind of advice can you give moms who are a bit anxious about mm. um, their birth experience? Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, that remember that you are the author and you are the uh, the the ultimate authority of the birth of your child uh i do suggest to shop around and find a person as a main care provider especially as you know find a doctor a medical practitioner who will support you in your vision of birth if you feel that you want one thing, if you, especially if you want to go a more natural way, but you feel from your uh, care provider a lot of bowels, a lot of you cannot do this, a lot of you cannot do that, and uh, if you feel being pushed uh, uh, to comply with the, you know, with their understanding of how like things, the things that they do. It's not the end of the world. There, there's the others out there who are more open-minded and who might be a better fit for your birth vision. So find the right care provider. That's uh, that's one big important step, like finding the right care provider. And then be open to information. Like there are a lot of options, fortunately. Uh, empower yourself with knowledge have a good birth plan in place, um, discuss it in advance, uh, and really come very prepared to the birth experience, just as prepared or even better prepared than for your wedding night. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Okay, Irina, I love that. So yes, you are the ultimate authority when it comes to your birthing oh. experience. So I love that. Yeah. Moment, so let's take yes. charge yeah. yeah, and arm take yourself with information yeah. is really important um, mm-hmm. so again check out Irina's Instagram page Birthing Gently um, mm-hmm. or just reach out to us and we'll give her contact information so thank, thank you Irina for this time with you I thank learned a lot really and it's okay. really interesting well I'm not uh, I'm, I'm no longer going to give birth so I can't hire you anymore but I'm okay. uh, at least a yeah. lot of moms have that option and, it, and I know you've been such a blessing too Hundreds of mothers who have I'll been with you in your eight years. Just who you are with the <laughs> amazing things. Like, look at the connections that you are making. All right. <laughs> thank you, Nina. Yeah. Thank you for the <laughs> work for money supporting us. I've been following you for years as well. It's, yeah, it's, uh, thank you. it's precious. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so... Mommy, thank you for listening to um to our session today with Irina. I know that there's a lot of questions probably that's gonna come out of the session. Feel free to message us and sure. we'll help you out for sure. So um here at Mommy Mundo, we believe that mom life should be celebrated and cherished. So we believe that you moms should be celebrated and cherished too. So from us to you, we say you, you are the, the mom. mom. <laughs>